Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romala here with the Hurricane Outlooking and Discussion for August 25th, 2021, or around 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for Invest Area 99L to become a significant concern to the United States Gulf Coast over the next several days, and a look at more tropical waves that could develop into systems over the next several days. So jumping straight into everything, Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we are tracking multiple systems as the climatological peak of the hurricane season is almost here. We have Invest Area 99L, Invest Area 97L, and Invest Area 98L, and a new tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa uh, over the next several days, and this has tremendous model support to also go on to develop, and as we should rightfully start to look out this way anyway, because most of our activity for the next couple of weeks is likely going to come from this area over here. Now, today we're going to be mainly focusing on Invest Area 99L. This poses the most significant land concern over the next several days. And I'm starting to become a little bit worried about this system for a multitude of reasons, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Looking at the visible satellite imagery today, again, our system right now isn't doing all that much. Again, we can definitely tell, though, that... We have a pretty broad uh, area of convergence. If we look here at the zoomed out uh, satellite imagery, we notice that there's a broad area of convection, especially north here, closer towards uh, the southern coast there of Haiti and close, closing in on Jamaica. But if you notice and look kind of real closely, we have a very sharp wave envelope through here. You at first glance have a wave axis that is tilted from southwest to kind of northeast. But if you look here in the visible satellite imagery, the flow coming off here of South America suggests we have an even tighter circulation than that. If you look here, you notice that we have south wind here, indicating that we have some type of very sharp trough axis that is located here on the southern end of that. And to the north immediately, we have some pretty good mid-level banding uh, that is uh, starting to suggest that we, may, uh, we might have a mid-level circulation that is beginning to form. You kind of notice that we have this a banding structure here evident. This is suggesting uh, something along the lines of a mid-level circulation that is beginning to form and uh, will take some time to establish. Now, if we look here at the water vapor satellite imagery, again, we can kind of take a look at what's kind of been plaguing the storm during the last several days. And one of the reasons why its development chances in the short term aren't increasingly that likely. We have this broad upper level trough here, this upper level tropical upper trosopheric trough or tut uh, that's been positioned over Florida, and you notice how it's starting to create a little bit of a bufferage between favorable conditions over here and shear directly to the west of the storm's environment. Now, typically what would happen is if you had a really potent storm that was already here and well-established, the outflow would basically override this shearing component and uh, would basically weaken this tut and force it away from here. Uh, but because we don't really have enough latent heat potential, and this is not a well-established cyclone at the moment, it's not likely to do that. So in the short term, there will be some shear coming from south to north or southwest to northeast that will likely be shearing over top of the system. And that's one of the things that will likely hinder significant development, at least in the short term. However, this tut is beginning to weaken and back away as upper level lows typically do. And this uh, that's kind of been sitting there for a while. And so this will begin to weaken out with time and we'll begin to see this shear uh, really go away over the next several days. Now, if we take a look here at an ASCAP pass from earlier this morning, again, or, you know, this was uh, slightly before about two o'clock Eastern time. Again, we can kind of see that the low level uh, circulation, there's a little bit of low level convergence and it seems to be kind of focused on the southern end. But a lot of the deeper convection is located on the northern end here. So we can tell that at the surface, there's not really much organization to it. But we notice these south winds here that are on uh, and coming off of South America. And this suggests that, again, we have this very sharp wave envelope that is something like this. And the wave axis is something like that. Now, we'll be watching to see where something forms over the next several days. If we look here at the 850 millibar vorticity, so this is the spin in the atmosphere at 5,000 feet off the ground. Again, this negative here, this darker blue, this is basically negative um, 
this is really negative vorticity or anticyclonic flow. And so this is suggesting, again, this very large tut here. And this is one of the things that's going to be uh, kind of creating this sheared effect over top of the storm. Now, our storm is still sitting down here, and this is non-tropical energy. But if this northern part of the wave envelope is able to consolidate, which some of the numerical model predictions are forecasting, this could, in fact, uh, scrape less of the Dominican or less of the Yucatan Peninsula and be more of a concern. Now, as for water temperatures, this is a look at actual sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico. And keep in mind, even on the cool end, the coldest sea surface temperature uh, in here is 26.2 uh, Celsius, which is basically run right on the edge for what's needed for tropical cyclone genesis. Now, assuming that we have a, a storm that is kind of taking a track, something like this, again, the Gulf of Mexico is very primed, this whole entire region. And we've been talking about this for the last several weeks. And if we look here at the upper ocean heat content map updated as of this morning, again, these red colors here, even some of these oranges and yellows, this is very indicative that we have some very high upper ocean heat content. And this basically increases latent heat release potential among, uh, among other things in the atmosphere and in the ocean. And this is concerning because if you get a storm to make its way into the Gulf of Mexico, like the weather uh, models are forecasting, we could end up with a pretty formidable system out here in the Gulf of Mexico within the next several days. And to illustrate this possibility, we'll look here at the GFS forecast in the 850 millibar vorticity. So this is the 12Z run valid for 2 p.m. this afternoon, and we'll kind of move this out here again. Now, we noticed that, again, in the model forecasting here, we noticed that uh, this is by 2 a.m. Friday morning. Now, here on the GFS, again, we have kind of this very weird complex setup here with tropical cyclones in the East Pacific. And this is going to matter. We'll talk a, a reason about that why here in a moment. Now, focusing solely on 99L, again, we noticed that there's a very broad wave, and this is part of that Central American gyre that is setting up across this region. And we notice that there's two areas of competing, um, you know, competing areas that will try to dominate over the next several days. Now we have the Southern wave envelope here, and then we have the Northern wave envelope. Now, typically in situations like this, the Northern uh, wave envelope is the one that's great, uh, creating the greater cyclonic flow and is able to therefore be the one to end up developing into a tropical cyclone. And on this particular run of the GFS, for instance, this indeed happens where we get a storm to form uh, right near the Yucatan Peninsula by Saturday morning. Now, in a situation like this, we may see a potential tropical cyclone advisories initiated as early as sometime tomorrow uh, if this indeed were to happen. Now, again, so we're looking probably sometime tomorrow or Friday where PTC advisories could be initiated. And we'll have to kind of look forward to that here and, and see the wording from the National Hurricane Center was the subsequent tropical weather outlooks. Now, going forth in time here, if we take a look here at the 200 millibar wind, we notice that there's a couple of very interesting but dynamical processes here that are important to understand. First of all, we could have a potential hurricane in the East Pacific that is very close here to Mexico. And with this, you get the storm in the East Pacific generating its own anticyclonic flow aloft. And typically in situations like this, the anticyclonic flow will spread over Mexico and flood into the Gulf of Mexico and creates a whole lot of shear where nothing much can really develop. Now, subsequently, at the same time, we have this very broad upper level anticyclone trying to also ventilate 99L or what would be Ida. Uh, if it gets its name first. And this would be one of the situations where, again, you kind of have this in-between flow where there's shear right here. So we're getting awfully close where, again, a track that is more so over the Yucatan instead of shooting the gap would create this problem where this could indeed run into the shear from the storm in the East, East Pacific at the time. Now, on most models, the shear in the western part of the Gulf of Mexico is not enough to slow down intensification. And in fact, you get an intensifying storm here on Sunday morning in the central Gulf of Mexico. 
Now, in terms of the steering component, we'll jump up to the 500 millibar uh, millibar uh, geopotential height and its anomalies. Now, you notice again we have uh, the players on the board here. You have a trough here, which is mainly responsible for turning most of our storms in the eastern Atlantic out to sea at this point and away from land. And then you have this ridge over North Carolina, which really is not here this time of the year. Typically, you have a ridge more so over Bermuda than you do over North Carolina. Now, this ridge is going to be weakening because we will have a trough that will be digging down here off the top of the screen and moving eastward, which is also going to be breaking down this ridge. So our net steering component is generally for the moment out of the west-southwest, kind of from west-southwest to kind of north-northwest. You, so you get a, a kind of a west-northwest or a northwest moving storm. Eventually, though, as the storm deepens here on the GFS, the steering flow becomes somewhat weak and the storm is now moving more northward because this ridge is now beginning to weaken here and its uh, influence here is forcing more of a northwest component kind of a north to northwest component and this trough up here off the top of the screen is now trying to reel the storm in towards the louisiana texas coastline here now there is still a reasonable amount of uncertainty if we jump to the ensembles from the gfs forecast and we look here at the potential spread. Again, each one of these uh, red numbers here indicate where a potential storm could be. And you have a wide range of outcomes from a storm, a weak one at that in the Bay of Campeche, to the furthest right outlier of a storm closing in on the Florida Panhandle just off the coast there of New Orleans uh, within about uh, day five. This is out to Monday morning. And you also get a potential for a faster moving storm to be inland already on Monday morning. And this is suggested by some of the models like the Euro. We'll take a look here at the 12Z Euro here, for instance. And again, this is the 12Z run valid for 8 a.m. this morning. And again, we kind of notice uh, much of the same solution here that forms uh, this northern part of the wave envelope near the Cayman Islands within the next five days shoots the gap between the Yucatan and Cuba and continues it as a powerful hurricane on day five uh, somewhere near New Orleans uh, or somewhere in the Louisiana, Texas coastline. Now, again, we have to see what happens here. Now, the spread here from the Euro, this is the 12Z run out valid for uh, out to about hour 150, so 18Z here on the 31st of August. You have a wide range of solutions. The deterministic run here was more something like this. And there's a wide range of solutions from a storm that's still uh, over Mexico to a potential storm somewhere over Texas. So my suggestion is for anybody that is along the Texas, Louisiana coastline, you need to have a preparedness plan right now. And I mean right now. Uh, for the potential of a storm or even a hurricane to be making landfall within your region within the next five, six, seven days. We're, we're talking uh, maybe as long as a week out or maybe as short as this upcoming Monday, and we're already at midweek here. So this is a very critical turning point where if we can get awareness to people, uh, again, that will be all the more better. And this does really pose a significant concern here. Now, again, if we look at the 200 millibar wind uh, here on the GFS by day five, again, we notice that, again, this is the GFS ensembles, but a very potent upper level outflow pattern and would, would likely be a very strong storm. Again, the mean here gets down to about 1,001 millibars. There is some shear here on the ensembles from, again, our storm over in the East Pacific. But again, if that storm is a little bit further towards the east like that, moving like that, like the, like the operational run shows, uh, we could be dealing with a very significant problem. And again, for what it's worth here, the GFS gets this down into the low 930 millibar range before making landfall here. So this is a real problem going far out in time. Now, real quickly, we'll look here at the other storms that we could be talking about during the next several days or so. So after we get our storm here, we'll be watching for, again, Invest Area 97L, which right now, again, will be moving northward during the next several days. And uh, this, again, actually, this is 98L, rather. Uh, but 98L will be moving northward. Again, some development is possible. 
the euro actually gets this way further west before turning it northward and trying to develop this into a tropical cyclone. We can see that here on the euro. Again, this is our storm. It actually gets it relatively far east, or I'm sorry, west, before starting its turn north. And then we could be looking at yet another storm on the euro here uh, within the end of the forecast run by September 4th. Now, Again, the upper level pattern is going to be one that tends to favor a recurve. Again, this is valid for Saturday. We have a big ridge over the north here with this troughing in between. So storms in the short term will tend to curve out to sea. And even in the long range, again, we have this general troughy pattern. We do get a storm in the very long range that tends to make it further uh, west. But again, I'm not really concerned about that for the short term. Uh, or for right now, again, our main concern will be invest area 99L for the threat that this could become a potent hurricane somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, currently, there is plans uh, right now. There, there is plans for a chase uh, somewhere along the Louisiana-Texas coastline here by sometime on Sunday. Again, my plan right now is to leave out of home base in Orlando, Florida, and go to Biloxi, Mississippi for the evening here by Saturday and then some, arrive in Louisiana or Texas by some time on Sunday, where, of course, we'd be setting out our cameras. And this seems to be a very formidable chase opportunity, and it looks like that that is going to be happening. So I do believe, instead of like Honoree, where we had to cancel, I do believe that this will be a very chaseable setup, and I do believe that's what we're going to do. So plans are in place for that. Of course, if you live in those areas and if you're told to evacuate, you know, evacuate, have a hurricane preparedness plan ready right now, just in case if that uh, does come to fruition. All right. With that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.